Hello everyone, myself Akshaya. Today in this video, we will be looking into the experimental setup and procedure of force measurement trainer kit using a strain gauge based load cell transducer. So our main objective of the experiment is to perform and check the characteristics of a load cell. So what is a load cell? Load cell is basically a sensor that converts force such as tension, pressure, compression, uh, into electrical signals. So here in our experiment, we will be using a strain gauge based load cell. So basically there are different types of load cells such as pneumatic hydraulic. In our experiment, we will be focused about strain gauge based load and we can find load cells in our day-to-day -day life such as the weight scales, uh, retail checkout counters, fitness equipment, uh, even in automobiles. Looking into the experimental setup, uh, this is how our force measurement trainer model looks like. Uh, this model consists of an internal circuit, uh, which is composed of a full configuration heat stone bridge, where the four arms are connected to the strain gauges that are attached inside the beam. Uh, and this is a cantilever base, and these are the weights. Uh, these weights act like a force being applied. Uh, and Moving ahead, so this is how our uh, load cell looks like. Here, one end is fixed, and the other end, uh, the, uh, the open end, we have a cantilever base where we apply force. Uh, and this load cell, here we have four strain gauges attached, and these strain gauges are connected into the internal circuit of inside this model uh, through these connections. This is how it looks internally. Next, moving to the theory behind it, uh, this load cell basically works on the principle of change in the resistance. Uh, like, uh, as we saw, uh, basically, what is a strain gauge? Strain gauge is nothing but a uh, simple thin wire which is etched on a non conducting uh, base uh, in a zigzag pattern, as shown on the right side here. So, when we apply force onto the cantilever base or weights onto the cantilever base. There are compression and tensions created uh, in the strain gauges attached here on our beam of load cell. So because of this tension and compression, uh, there is a, a change in the length of the wire. Uh, so because of which the area of the cro area of cross section varies and since resistance is inversely proportional to area of cross section respectively the resistance changes in both the cases so shortly we can say that a uh, strain gauge load cell operates through changes in electrical resistance uh, and these kind of systems are used to measure the force directly through compression and tensions created uh, so so here to measure it accurately, the force being applied and the change happening in the resistance, we employ a full configuration heat stone bridge uh, circuit into our apparatus such that we will not miss out any point of accuracy. Now looking into the procedure, first make the adjust knob to zero zero and make sure the toggle switch is switched to kgs or millivolts as you required. Uh, then keep loading the base slowly by increasing the weights. Do not overload the base because uh, it will cause error. Uh, and do the same procedure. Take the readings while you are unloading the apparatus. Now moving forward into observations. So these are the readings we got while increasing the load and decreasing the load. So this is the linear plot we could get from the respective readings we have. So we see that uh, we, plot, we plotted both for loading and unloading values. Uh, now talking about the results, uh, so from the observation, we, we got a linear response, which is a desirable response. Uh, and we got a hysteresis loss of 0.02 kg. 
Now the precautions to be maintained during this experiment are you should not overload as it increases the hysteresis error and try maintaining the environment stable and do not disturb the base uh, or beam of the uh, load cell which to avoid jitters in the measurement. Thank you.